What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over saving and loading our game. So this is a really, really exciting one. And what we're going to do is track our currency. So you see, I just started my game, I'm going to go to the store, and I already start with a whopping 40 coins. This is because I am able to save my progress after each match and load it back in when I load up the game. So following this tutorial, you two can have fat stacks like I have. And so what we're going to want to do is exit out of the store menu, go to our settings, and I'm going to decrease the number of rounds to one so that this happens a little bit more quickly. And I'm going to come into my game and have a fight. Now remember, I have 40 coins, and I am awarded 20 coins whenever I play a match, win or lose. So I'm going to beat up my opponent here. I'm going to spam this move whatever I have to do, maybe throw in some special moves in there. And eventually we will defeat our opponent. And once we do this, then we will want to make sure that we get our coins and that those coins are saved. So once we reach this screen right here, our coins, our currency are going to be added to our total. You can see that there's also a little plus 20 right here that indicates that. And now I can go back to my main menu. I can go into my store and you say I have 60 coins, but this was already working, right? We already had the ability to track how many coins we had. So let's go and quit our game now. We'll do it the proper method. And now the game has been entirely closed. I'm gonna launch it again. I'm gonna go to my store and you see I have 60 coins when I start my game. So we have saved the currency out and we've loaded it back in when the game is loaded. That's what we're covering today. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for supporting the channel in this series. I really, really am grateful and I'm so excited to get to these topics that you guys have been requesting a lot. And so I hope you are as excited as I am. Now, before we watch this episode, if you would like to get caught up in the series and learn to do everything that we've done so far, including attacking our opponent, making these throw animations, level streaming, all this great stuff. I'll link you to this playlist right here in the top right corner. You can click on that I card and it will bring you to the entire fighting game playlist. Alternatively, if you're more interested in just the save game, so saving your data and loading it back in, that's perfectly fine. I will link this episode right here in the top right corner. You do not have to watch this episode, but this episode is about our store widget and our in-game currency. And that is what we're going to be saving today. So if you're interested in that at all, you can feel free to follow those so that you can have the same result I do there. But this will work with any type of saving and loading data. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to copy anything from this tutorial specifically. It will work with your project in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. With all that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. This tutorial series is in C++ and Blueprint. We're going to be working entirely in code today, so we don't need to access any blueprints. The first thing we need to do before we go into that code is create a save game object class. So Unreal Engine has a method of saving and loading games that they call the save game class. We can make a child of that class to save out our own data and load in our own data. And that's exactly what we're going to do. If you go to add new and new C++ class, you can press show all classes and search for an individual class. We are going to want to search for the save game class. Now, there are a few different types, but save game, the main one here is the one that we want. And so you can click on this class and hit next. And you can create this with the name of whatever you want. I called mine save game data. And you can see the name save game data is already used by another class. That's this one that you see here. I created this one, but you don't have to call it save game data. Call it whatever you want. Call it my save, call it save object. It doesn't matter. When you're ready, you can go ahead and press create class and it will go ahead and make this class for you in Visual Studio. Now, if you are running the editor, like I am through Visual Studio, you're going to have to close and stop this so that these can compile correctly. But you should still see a save game data .h and .cpp within your project folder of your source folder. So basically when you come in, you might see something like this. Just click on your project, open it up, open up the source folder, and then open up the folder with your project name. 
and you should see your new class that you created. For me, it's savegamedata.h and savegamedata.cpp. Once you have created that, let's go ahead and step inside of those. So let's start with the savegamedata.h. Now in here, everything that you see with the includes and the class and generated body is already going to exist. Everything I have highlighted right now on the screen is what I have added. And that's all we're going to need today to demonstrate how we can save and load data in our game. So the very first thing I'm going to do in my save game data.h is just write public and make a constructor for this. Technically, you don't need a constructor, but a constructor is very, very good for all classes. And if we don't use a constructor, then we won't have default values for our variables, which we were going to want to do when we were creating new saves. If you've been following this series or any of my other series, you'll be very familiar with constructors and you'll know that we usually set our default values for variables in them. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Basically, just make a function that is the same name as your class. Since we created this object off the save game class, which is a child of the U object class, we are going to make sure we have to put that U in front of it. So you save game data. Then under this, is going to be all of your variables that you want to save out. Now you can do anything. You can do currency, you could do player level, you could do player position, you could do player rotation. You have all these different options that you could save out. In a fighting game specifically, we most likely aren't going to need to be able to load in the middle of a fight unless you have saved states. You want to save and you want to load everything back to the exact point that it was in the fight. If you do, that's perfectly fine you will absolutely be able to do that with this method. So don't worry about that. But I am going to stick with a simpler approach for this basic episode, and I'm just going to save out my currency. So that's the only variable I'm going to have today. Feel free to start loading this file up with a bunch of variables that you're going to want to save and load. Regardless of what you choose, there is one thing that is absolutely essential that you must do. If you don't do this, you can run into huge problems where your data isn't being saved and you won't know why. When you make a variable, for example, I've made integer currency here. Make sure that it is a U property. It doesn't have to be visible anywhere like I have here. You can put any tags in here or no tags at all. You can actually leave it just like this if you'd like. But your variables absolutely have to have U property because if they don't, they will be garbage collected. And if you're not familiar with that, it's okay. You don't really have to know a lot about it. Basically, Unreal does a lot behind the scenes to clean up any memory that it doesn't feel needs to be used anymore. However, if something is tagged as U property, it remains longer than other non U property variables. And so when we need to save our data out, we're going to make sure that we have our variables as U property. I've made it visible anywhere so I could then use this to display it on a widget in the blueprint. Maybe when the player is selecting their save file, it shows how much currency they have on it. And so making it visible anywhere allows us to access that value in the blueprint and then we could display it to the user. Once you're done with your save game data.h, we need to go into the save game data.cpp and you're just going to have these two lines up at the top when you come into this. So all we're going to be adding is the constructor. So you can set it up just how I've done it here. And what we're going to want to do is set our default values for the variables that we are saving or loading because the save game object does both. It allows us to save, but we also use it to load the data back in. For my example, the currency should default to zero because it's very possible that the player doesn't have any currency on them. And thus zero is the default value. Now this is our save game data object. This is all we really need to do in the save game data. The rest of the logic is going to be done in our base game instance because that is where we're going to actually configure how we're saving and loading our data. So I'm going to go to my base game instance.h and I'm going to scroll down to where I have my functions right here and I've made three new functions. I made create save file, save game, and load game. And they're pretty much all self-explanatory create save file is going to make a new save file for us. We need a file to save to. You could just save to no file and then, well, how are you going to load it back in? So creating a save file actually makes a slot or a file that we can save to. Save game is just when we want to actually save to that file. And load game is when we want to load from that file. 
So make these three functions. And once we do that, we can go into the base game instance.cpp. And there are two includes that we need to add to this file. So I've added the include to kismet slash gameplay statics. Gameplay statics has a lot of good things for saving and loading data, and we're going to use them. Unreal does a good job with saving and loading data, so it makes our lives easier. So why not use what they've given us? There's also an include here to our save game data file because we're going to want this object to actually store and retrieve the values that we have in here, such as the currency value. We're going to want to be able to grab that both to save it out, but then also to load it back in. So we need to have access to the save game data file. So add these two includes, and once you've done that, we can scroll down and make our three new functions. Now the first one I'm going to do is create save file. The create save file, as I said, is what's going to actually make the file or slot that we need to save data to. So I already have this file that I've made, but I can show you what it looks like. If you go into your file explorer and you go to where your project is. So for me, I have this fighting game project. This is the one I'm using currently. We can go to the saved folder inside of here and there will be something called save games. If you go in there, here is where your files, your save files will save by default when you are saving and loading within the Unreal Engine editor. It's different if you package your game, of course. So that is for a later date. This is how we can check our files and make sure that they are saved appropriately. And we can also delete this file and create a new one on the spot. And you'll see that all of our data gets deleted and we have to start over. I'll show you that a little bit later. But just know this is how you can access this file. So if you run into any troubles, make sure you have this file being created. And if you need to, you can go ahead and delete this file at any point to start over all your saved data. All right, so to create that file, we are going to use a function that you gameplay statics has called create save game object. This might look a little intense, but honestly, it's not bad. It's just a lot of different things going on at once, but I'll explain them all. So what we really need to do is track the data that we want to save. And to do this, we need to have an instance of our save game data object that we made. And we also need to initialize that object so that we can create the file using the save game to slot function. So I've made a pointer, you game save data pointer, and I've called it data to save. Now for create save file, we don't actually have to save any data other than the defaults. So whatever is in our save game data constructor is what will be saved, but we do need a default save file. You know, when you load into a game and it's like no save data detected, would you like to create one? We need that save data file. That way we can save to it. Even if we haven't done anything yet, if we have nowhere to save, then we can't actually save. So we have our you save game data pointer data to save and it equals you gameplay statics colon colon create save game object. Then in the parentheses, in the parameter list for this create save game object function, it requires a static class of the type that we're trying to create. So we want our u save game data colon colon static class parentheses. So this whole section highlighted right here is a function to create a save game object. And we're going to set it equal to this data to save variable that we have here. But it returns a standard save game object, the base class. It does not return our class that we made. So it returns you save game, not you save game data. So we need to make sure that we cast to the appropriate type. And we're going to cast to you save game data. And make sure you put parentheses around this because this is what we are casting to that type. So we're getting the result from this function. We're casting it to our type and we're setting equal to this variable. At this point, we have an initialized and defaulted save game data object. So now we can actually create the file using this object. And to do that, we can call you game play statics colon colon save game to slot. And we pass it the 
save game object that we have, which is data save, the name of the slot we want to save to. For me, I'm just calling it slot one, but you can call this anything you want. You could call it one, you could call it default, you could call it save game, it doesn't matter. If you allow multiple saves on a profile, it will be important that you name them something that you know you can access and grab again. So slot one, two, three, that way when the player picks their save file, we can load the appropriate data from that file. But otherwise it doesn't matter, you can call it whatever you'd like. This last parameter here is just the user index. This is actually for platform specific saving, so you could have different users on one platform and each user will need to have their own save file. Even if one is piggybacking off of the other, they still have their own information. And so in this case, and in probably all cases for the fighting game, we are going to be saving to the default player because we're not going to be loading in data that is going to be available for one player and not the other. Since we can just let player one's data be what we display. So in a local scenario, say we have two players signed into a game and player one has unlocked all the characters and player two has not unlocked all the characters well player two should still be able to play as the characters that player one unlocked even if they don't have it on their personal profile because player one is the host or the leader of this local session so for my case i'm gonna put it as zero but at this point we have created a save file and so once this function is run we will create a save file that is called slot1.sav for slot1.save. That's the very first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is go over how saving actually works. So we can go to our save game function. Now, for save game to work, what we actually have to do is load the game or load the slot, the file that we have, and then update it. We don't want to create a new save game object every time. If we do, we'll just override what we already had. We want to take what we had and update it to meet the new save that we're storing in that file. So in save game, we are going to initialize our data to save again, just like we did above. But this time, instead of creating a new save game object, we are actually going to load the data that is in that slot. So we're going to call you gameplay statics colon colon load game from slot. Now in the parentheses, the parameters for load game from slot are the file name or the slot name and the player again to load it from. So I'm going to pass in slot one as the name of the file because right now we're only dealing with one slot and that is what I called it when I created it above. So we're going to use slot one and we're going to use zero for the index. This is going to be for the main player index. Now, after we do that, we want to make sure that this variable has been initialized correctly. If it is null pointer or not valid, it means one of two things. It means either there is no save game on that slot or at this name, or it means the file was unable to be loaded due to other reasons. So if it's null pointer, we don't want to go ahead and start actually saving our data because we don't have anything to save to. If data to save is not equal to null pointer, or essentially if there's a valid data source that we can save to, if there's a valid save game object or file that we can save to, we're gonna start saving out our data. And to actually save out our data, what we need to do is grab all the values that we could possibly wanna save and set them appropriately on our data to save object. For me, I only have the currency, so that's the only one I'm gonna set, but you could have a lot of variables here. I'm gonna call data to save currency, and I'm gonna set it equal to the total currency. Total currency is a variable that I have in base game instance.h. So if you're not following the series and you don't know what that is, just know it is an integer I have in here that I am using and setting this value to. You could do this with any value, any variable you need. And so now my data to save currency is going to be equal to the currency at the current time, which could be 40, 60, whatever. Once I have all my variables set on this save game data object, then we want to actually call you gameplay statics save game to slot. And similar to load game from slot, what we're going to do is we're going to pass the data to save object into it. 
We're going to put the name, which is slot one, because that's the one we created and the one that we're loading from. And again, we're going to say player zero. And at this point, we've actually saved our game. But that was only if the data to save wasn't equal to null pointer. If the data to save was equal to null pointer, or essentially it was invalid or null or empty, then we would go to this if statement, this else if. And so else if not you game play statics does save game exist and does save game exist does exactly what it sounds it will check to see if this file exists and so if it can find our save file or not so if it doesn't find our save file this is going to return false so we're checking if not save game file exists that's what the exclamation mark is if the save game file doesn't exist, then we want to call our create save file function because now we want to create one. Before we attempt to save to it, we need to create one. So this else if is hit if the save file doesn't exist, and this if is entered if the save file does exist. That's all of our saving done. All we have to do is loading now. So let's scroll down a little bit and make our load game function. Now load game is very similar. It's a little bit different. It's basically just the reverse process. So for load game, we do want to retrieve the data from the slot the same way we did in save game. This time we're not bringing it in so that we can overwrite it. We're bringing it in just to update the game with that data, but it's really the same process. So I have you save game data pointer data to load, but we still call you gameplay statics load game from slot using slot one and player ID of zero. Then I cast that to my use save game data type so that we can store it in this variable. Now, if the data to load is not equal to null pointer or essentially it is valid and we have found data that we can load, we are going to want to update our in-game variables with the variables from this save game data object. So instead of doing data to save currency equals total currency, we're doing the reverse. We're setting our total currency equals to the data to load currency. So setting our base game instance variable equal to the data to load object. Else, if the data to load is no pointer or is empty, that means we don't have a save file or the save file can't be found, in which case we most likely want to create one. So let's check first. Else if not does save game exist with our slot one and player ID of zero. And if it doesn't exist, we know we want to create a new save file. So whether we're saving or loading, if we can't find the file, make sure we create a new one. But if we can, we're going to save to it or load from it. Now what we need to do is find out where we want to call save game and call load game. So for me, I want to load my data as soon as the game loads. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that. I decided to call load in my init or initialize function in my base game instance. The base game instance persists between levels and so when this is created i have a pretty good feeling that the world exists and is able to be loaded from my variables are able to be assigned based off of that so i say in it on base game instance is safe you could do it on the game mode as well you could do it when a player presses an input you could have them select their slot that they are loading from in which case you'd want to load once they make that selection you could do it from a ton of places for now i'm going to do it as soon as this base game instance is ready if you don't already have the init function that's fine in your base game instance.h you can override in it it is part of the default game instance class and so there is already logic being done when the game instance is initialized we are just going to override this function and add our own logic. I've already done this in the series, so I don't have to do it, but there you go. If you're not following the series, you could go ahead and add that. Just set up your init function in here, call super init, and then call your load game function. This should load whenever the game loads up, but when do we want to save? So that's another one. We could have it saved when the player presses a button. We could have them go and save. It could save after every match. It could save when they exit the game. I'm going to save after every match, although you'll probably want to save more than just in one spot, but that's where I'm going to save for now. So I'm going to go into my fighter template game mode.cpp. 
and I have a match one function in here. I'm going to scroll down to that. And this is when the match is over, when one character has defeated another. And we're going to the match win animation. In here, I was updating the total currency in the base game instance. So we were adding currency that the player now has access to because they played that match. After the currency has been added, I just call base game instance save game. For me, that's a logical point to save, but again, put it wherever you feel is right. And now we have called our save game and load game functions, so we can go into our editor and you should be able to save and load. And you can see, you already saw at the start, but I can load in my currency at any point. Now, if I go and I delete my save file, now I just lost all my data. So I go into store and now I have zero coins. I've lost my save. You'll see, since I just played the game though, now a new save file is created. So when I go and play my game and play my matches, I will be able to save to this file at any point. So if I were to delete this one, you can see as soon as the game loads up here, the file is created if I delete it. And if somehow my save file gets deleted while I'm in my game here, let's say I deleted it or got corrupt or whatever happened, I come in and I load my game. If I actually play this match, since we check before saving to that file, if the file exists, we will be able to create a new save file on that. Now this would probably never happen, it never should happen, but I guess if you're messing with your own files, it could, or if somehow they got deleted by accident. You could create a new file and you would be good to go. And I'll show that off here after I defeat this opponent. And here we go. The save file should already be made and it is. Because the match has already been won even though it's still playing some of its animations here. I can close at any point and the data will be saved. Now, since the save file was just created, my currency is going to be wrong in the game. I'm not going to have any currency when I should have 20, but that's actually because I didn't have a save file and we just created it with the default values. So you'd have to save again. And this is where you would probably save during like your quit, for example. When we hit the quit button, it's a good chance we wanna save around this area. But anyway, guys, that's what we got for you today. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope it helps you save and load your game so that way you don't lose your progress every time. We'll be doing a ton with this in the future, including player profile stuff, achievements, uh, more in-game currency, very exciting stuff in the future. But anyway, guys, that is all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and consider contributing to the Patreon or YouTube membership or even just giving thanks with super thanks on YouTube. The donations help a lot and they really continue to support the series and I love working on this content for you guys so thank you so much for all the love and support. If you had any issues with your game or your implementation of saving and loading feel free to reach out to me. You can do so in the discord community there's a link in the description and it is completely free I'd be happy to help you so you could keep working on your game. But anyway guys that's all I got for you so thank you so much for watching I am Sean the Bro and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.